What's going on guys? Tool Crews here with Tundes. And today we're riding on my old regular daily bike commuting route. So a lot of you guys who have followed the channel for a while know that I used to be a daily bike commuter and I rode my bike 40 kilometers every day round trip. And today my wife is going to be riding my old route home. So we rode over to my old work area. We're going to be riding the rest of the way home. So we're basically doing our full route, but today's video is just going to be half of the ride our way home. And today we're riding on our mountain bikes. Yeah. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with our ride and let's see what she thinks of the course. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, let's go. <laughs> So here we are getting started with our ride home. It's a beautiful sunny day here in central Japan today. For those of you who don't know, we're based in Nagoya area. So Nagoya is central Japan. And we're going to be mostly cycling along some of the river paths. So Japan is full of rivers and there's always, almost always some sort of river path. It's not always the best for cycling, uh, but sometimes you can find some nice paths, especially if you have a mountain bike. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going on some of the mountain bike packs. Migi, <laughs> kochida yo. So she took a wrong turn. We're going to be going on this secret path here. So again, she's not really used to this course. So I'm going to try and guide her as we go. And we're actually going to be taking a slightly different route back home than the route we took here. So this is a new route for her. It's a pretty exciting route. And so that's one of the nice things about the cycling here in Japan is all the river paths and you can find some nice fun routes. Sometimes there can be a lot of barriers though and you can't always go so far on the path without getting blocked with some sort of tape or it's just sort of dead ending or you have to go under some sort of bridge. We're going to be doing a bit of that today but I'll show you guys a little bit about some of the secrets on how to do that and how to look for some of the good routes but it is a hot sizzling day today. 30 degrees Celsius and blue skies, barely any clouds in the sky. So we're definitely getting sunburnt and we're both losing our touch a little bit on riding regular bikes. We've been mostly staying inside lately the last few weeks and just riding Zwift indoors on the spin bike and our lack of touch is definitely showing as we've already crashed. We each crashed once today Nothing too serious, like Tuang wasn't able to unclip when she got off her bike and tilted over. Uh, so she was at a dead stop and I sort of ran into a curb without seeing it. I wasn't expecting it. I was just on a regular path. All of a sudden it turned into a curb and I sort of bumped into that. So we got to be careful getting on the road here. So you can see we can't continue that way. We're going to get back up on the main road. And when I was commuting on my road bike, I'd normally be on this route, but there's a lot of cars that speed on here, so if I can avoid it, I do. Okay, let's get that. Okay. What that day? So pretty dangerous. Okay, let's get there. And you only need to be on here for a few seconds, but it's pretty dangerous. You can see it's a small, pretty narrow road. Barely two cars are able to fit. And yeah, really dangerous. Definitely don't like that. And this is where some of the main rivers intersect. Straight ahead is Nagoya City. So we're not going into the city. We live on the outskirts of the city. So we're going to be going left here. This is one of my new secret favorite routes. Definitely some of the more rough roads here in Japan. A lot of the main roads here in Japan are really well maintained, but there's a fun network of secret back roads that are connected to each other and it's fun making your own little routes like this. 
This road is full of potholes, which are pretty rare here in Japan. And we've got an airport nearby here. There's actually two airports, the main airport to the south and then a smaller airport to the north. So sometimes we get some planes like that flying through. And it is a really clear day today. We can see really far some of the mountains in the distance. I'm not sure if they'll show up on the GoPro though. And this is another cool area that people have pointed out in some of my other videos as I pass through here is this is a sort of communal farming area. So you can rent out some of the space here and you can farm some of your own produce. So there's a lot of these areas along the river pass here in Japan. And that's why they don't really maintain these roads because only some of the trucks go through here. It's also really windy today. We had a strong headwind coming out here, so we're gonna enjoy the nice tailwind going back. And oh wow, they paved this area, so this is a lot nicer than the last time I came through here. Oh, michi ga tarashikunatta. So, <laughs> so much for going through the rough roads. We're on nice smooth roads right now. And we're gonna cut through a little neighborhood shortcut here in a second. Koko Hidari. If we keep going straight, we get messed up with all these bridges, but there's a fun network that you can go through without having to stop. So that's what we're gonna do. It's an interesting place to hang out. And we don't want to bomb through here because there are some residents that will be walking by. So we're going to be careful around some of the corners. And the interesting thing about these residential areas in Japan is sometimes they mix residential and business areas. So it can be just a bunch of houses and then all of a sudden a business, they're sort of mixed together. So some unique zoning laws here in Japan or not so strict compared to like the US anyway. And there's some old, old uh, houses in here. Always got to be careful in these streets though because a lot of cars will just bomb through the stop signs. So even if you have right away, it's a good idea to yield as much as possible just to make sure no cars are coming. We're going to go right here. And we're gonna sneak under the bridge right here. So this is a one-way road, but if you're on your bike, you can come back this way. So you can go both ways on the bike. But if you're in a car, you can only go this way. And next, we're gonna go right here. Sneak to the right. And this is another kind of dangerous intersection. Small roads, little cars, everyone trying to go fast. And this will bring us back up to the river. But this time we're up in the high ground by the river. And I'll let two and go ahead of me. Masugu. 
And this is a fun road to ride on because you get a nice view down into some of the Japanese houses. You get a nice view of the river, but you gotta be careful because it's super narrow and there's lots of cars trying to go by here really fast because this is one of the few roads without stoplights. And this especially gets busier during rush hour. So after work at night, this road could get a little scary sometimes. So generally I would like riding down there, down because there's no cars that go through. But if it's a rainy day, that area will get really messy with just a little bit of flooding and the dirt nearby. So generally on the dry days, I'd ride down there. But on the rainy days, I would ride up here and I would stay a lot more dry and a lot cleaner because there wasn't any dirt or anything up in the high ground here. But even though it's still, it's like what, three, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, not quite rush hour yet, but still a decent amount of cars coming by and it is a windy day. We got all the, the koi fish guys up here. This is really cool to see. But you gotta be careful with the strong winds up here so it doesn't knock you down the steep hill. Some guys skateboarding down there. Pretty interesting. Seen a lot of skateboarders out today. In our last video, we were cycling around this park and I saw this new skate park I hadn't seen before. So that was really cool. the warmer weather everything is just looking a lot brighter a lot greener grass a lot more bright flowers Hirari left here so if we go straight here we're gonna get stuck at this bridge we're not gonna be able to go but we can go straight through under here that's another nice thing about this route is we don't have to stop but that's also where there's a lot of fast cars coming through We're a little bit late for the train. Train's passing by straight ahead over there. We go right under the track. So if you time it right, you go under there when the train goes by. It is really loud. And there's some other cool views over here. If you can see, we've got the water towers or water balls, whatever they're called. Interesting apartments too. And this river we're cycling along today is the Yada River, Yadagawa. One of the main rivers here in Nagoya.
and we're gonna drop down into the lower path pretty soon. But you gotta know the right time to cross down. If we were to cross down now, we'd actually get blocked up ahead a little bit. So we're gonna go along this path as far as we can, then cut down, and then that way we won't get blocked anymore. This took a lot of trial and error. It's kind of a maze of different paths here, but if you know the right path, you can go pretty smoothly without having to stop, which is a pretty nice thing inside the Japanese city. If you've ever lived or been inside a Japanese city before, you just know there's constant stop signs, constant red lights. Koko kiyotsukete, masugu. Tomate. That's a cute little electric car. Migi, masugu kiyotsukete. Okay. So there's a factory there, an apartment here. Koko uh, migi. I'll lead the way. So we're going to drop down. This is another place that's nice to have a mountain bike. And this way we can cut underneath this bridge. You can go up the top route, but you're gonna have to wait for some traffic lights. Nice breeze with the wind. It's usually pretty windy this time of year in Japan, but once the summer hits and the humidity hits, the wind all of a sudden stops. So it gets even extra hot. So it's pretty much one of the nice times of the year. Right now, if you like warm weather, but not like crazy humid weather, pretty soon it's gonna be rainy season and it's gonna be humid, like just craziness. So not looking forward to that season. But right now, it's a nice, it's a nice normal, normal heat. Feels pretty good. Konohashi wataru. And lots of people fishing over in the river. I wouldn't want to eat anything from these rivers. What's this little dam over here? Miki. Ima mare kono michi wa dou? Ah. Dochi ga tanoshi, sochi ga kochi.違うよ。こっちの方車多い。すみません。すみません。なくなるね。怖い。<笑> 
That's the other bad thing about these paths down here is they're pretty narrow and they're not wide enough for everyone to use. And especially if there's walkers walking next to each other or people walking their dogs next to each other, it's just a dangerous mess. And you can see we're not the only ones riding our bikes. So she's about to experience the same problem that we just did. And yeah, these paths get even more narrow in the summer when these weeds sort of just collapse in on the course. Sort of the, one of the unfortunate things here. I really wish Japan, um, a lot of Asian countries are really river-based. So like Korea and Korea, Japan, and Taiwan, there's a lot of rivers, a lot of river cycling paths, but Japan doesn't really make them very cycling friendly. They just kind of have the bare minimum, kind of like this, but the paths in Korea and Taiwan are just next level. Like they have a really good cycling infrastructure. I'm not sure why they're able to do it, but Japan, um, even though it's uh, theoretically the wealthiest one of them all, isn't able to do it. But it is what it is. Something is better than nothing for sure. But every time I go to Korea or Taiwan, I'm just blown away by the awesome cycling path network they have there by the rivers. Kokohidari. Oh. <laughs> And we're crossing back up here again. Masugi hirari. Because we're about to cross this bridge over to the other side. We're going a bit north, north east right now. And we got to start heading more east. Otherwise, we're getting away from our home. Masugu. I'd say. Koko Masugu. Going straight through here. It's another thing you gotta be careful about, those poles. There's always some sort of barrier or something that's intended to protect pedestrians, but actually makes the course a bit more dangerous. And there's lots of signs on the grounds over here uh, saying go to Kinchi, so no golf, I guess, a lot of guys will practice their old guys, old men will practice their golf over here. And you can see uh, this guy is actually practicing golf, <laughs> even though there's a sign right behind him saying, don't do that. I guess they can kind of get away with it if they're just doing like light putting or something. Uh, but there's, I've definitely seen a lot of old guys here uh, doing more driving practice. Golf is another really popular sport here in Japan, but it is really expensive to go to the main practice areas. And the reason we crossed here, if we stayed down there, we could have gone through, but we got to cross this bridge. Koko Amigi. So we're going to cross this bridge. Here as well, 
Let's wait for the light. Okay, go. Coco, I'll cut it, show. Coco, I'll cut So we're getting away from the, the main river pass area. We're gonna get more into some more residential areas from now on. So it's a nice variety on this commute. I really enjoyed it, doing it for as long as I did. It was just nice diversity, not a lot of just the same thing. It's a nice mix. And one of the other nice things I noticed when I was daily bike commuting was just sort of you see the same people every day and it's nice to know like you're not in it alone, like you're, you're all going through your daily commute, so your daily routine, and it's nice to see those other people going through the same thing. Right now I'm riding, we're riding at a, a time I'm not used to, so I don't really know any of the people, but uh, it's bringing back some of those memories as we ride along this course. It's gonna be a sad day when we do move away from Japan and we're not gonna able, be able to do this course anymore. So we gotta enjoy it the last few times we can ride here. In this section, you'll get a lot of the people from the residential area just coming over here for a nice little walk or a little stroll. So this section in particular, you can't go too fast. You gotta be careful of the, the residents. There's a lot of more elderly people and people with dogs and children. Just, uh, a lot of children right now, especially not so much in the morning commute or evening commute. And this is our first main stop. We're gonna have to cross the light here. This says Kanaregawa Cycling Road, and it's a really bad cycling road. It's really narrow, so we're actually better off going along on the side road here, which is what we're gonna do, because it's just too narrow, there's too many people, and there's not too many cars down here, so it's a lot safer down here, I feel. We can go a little bit faster. And this is one of the last main stretches of the commute. You'll notice there's a cat right here. There's a lot of cats along this road. A lot of sort of stray cats, um, or maybe not so much stray cats, but just they, they live outside and people will sort of take care of them out here without officially owning them. But they can survive pretty well out here because a lot of Japanese people really like cats and sort of pity them and will help give them food or like take care of them when they see them out here. And even with all the stray cats, like you'll notice there's, there's nothing really dirty out here. The, there were some marks on the ground just back there. Those are some berries. It's a berry season right now. So Tuantan's really excited about the berries. She's been trying to stop and pick some on her first way over here. So we're probably gonna come back out here again soon and 
we don't have a bag today, so we can't store the berries. We're gonna come back with a bag and do some berry hunting. So maybe we'll make a separate video for that when we do that. Nice flowers along the path too. A lot of people will grow their own sort of little garden areas along here. Okay, koko hidari. Ah, hidame. Another, there's a lot more intersections over here, so we got to be especially careful over here. Huh. Let's get the Ryotu. So lots of people crossing on this intersection. Not one of the safest ones, but generally not too bad. Just got to make eye contact with the people before you cut in front of them. Make sure it's safe to go. Cute little dog. And this guy's parking here. Or trying to park, I don't know. But you do need to be careful over here because some cars will be pulling out, some cars will randomly be parking. Uh, there'll be delivery trucks, delivery cars, delivery bikes, and so on. Yeah, <laughs> omoin jai. Tune's a bit of a gear masher. Land cruiser. Another crossing here. Technically, we're supposed to have right away when you see these striped crossings. So cars need to stop when someone's in those, a pedestrian's in those, but they rarely do. It's kind of 50-50. And I haven't really talked about this on the channel too much, but a lot of you guys know we announced that we are leaving Japan in the very near future. We're going to be going to Vietnam and we are planning to move to Vietnam already, but the country's closed. So we're not able to get my visa to go over there right now. So we're sort of waiting to do that. And I've talked about some of the reasons that we were uh, moving while we're going over there. Of course, the main reason is family. So we can be closer to her family. Another big reason is there's a lot of opportunities there's a lot of growth over there and another reason is just you get a lot more value for your money over there so if we were to live here long term in Japan one thing that we would need to consider doing is eventually like buying our own house figuring out a place to settle and I really do like the appeal of certain Japanese houses like in the countryside but a lot of Japanese houses are built like really inefficiently or they need to be built with certain weaker materials 
or more materials that aren't as <laughs> insulated, I guess, or I'm not sure what the excuse is, but they're not able to use concrete as much, mainly because of all the earthquakes. So a lot of the houses in Japan are, have really thin like walls, so you can sort of hear everything in the house. If you're in an apartment, you can hear everything in your next door neighbor. And it's one of the really annoying things of living in Japan uh, for me, coming from America, where I'm used to like American houses and American style houses and that kind of standard. But in v Vietnam, they have really nice houses and they, they're able to use concrete. The houses are really big and a lot of them are really modern now because they're just sort of getting to the point where they can start building some nicer houses and they don't have, yeah, they don't have to deal with the earthquakes. That's a big thing. So that's another big reason is just, yeah, we're able to, if we're gonna settle long-term and we're gonna buy a house one day, I'd rather get a house that's gonna last a long time and yeah, not having to deal with the, the risk of earthquakes. The, there's a, supposedly gonna be a really big earthquake here in this area in Japan in the somewhat near future. They're predicting that anyway. No one knows when it's gonna happen, but we don't wanna be here when it does happen. And thankfully, yeah, there, there are some earthquakes, I guess, in Vietnam, but they're mostly really small. And in Japan, there's a lot of earthquakes. Most of them are really small, but they do have some big ones pretty regularly too. And most houses are, they're built to withstand it, so it's not that big of a problem, but anyway, just another factor to consider. But even the house prices are pretty insane, I think, in Japan. Like, for what you get, I think Japanese houses are really expensive. And for the same price, you can get a nice property, a bigger house, a way nicer house in the U.S. Thank you. So if we are ever in the point where we're able to buy a house and we're considering buying a house and ideally it would be a house for building our business like one day doing our cycle sort of bed and breakfast cycle tourism uh, cycling hotel kind of business is what we're thinking about so if we're ever when we're well when we start planning that out it's just a lot more realistic from those perspectives and then also of course there's the visa issues we don't have to deal with the visa issue because um, she's a Vietnamese citizen and we're married. So it's the same thing with a lot of foreigners who have businesses here in Japan. Most of them are married to a Japanese person, so they don't have to worry about the visa issue. And the visa issue is huge. That's another reason why it's really difficult for us to stay here. And a business visa, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff you have to go through to do that. But there are, there are some pretty nice houses here in Japan, but they're gonna cost you a pretty small fortune. I guess it's sort of the same problem in a lot of countries nowadays. A lot of the younger generations, no one's really able to afford houses anymore. So the only people who have houses are people who inherit it from their families. So I guess this is a problem in Taiwan. It's a big problem here in Japan. Salaries just keep going lower here and not many people are able to afford new houses. We're gonna cut through here. But in the US, salaries are still pretty decent in the US and there's still a lot of cheap houses in the US. So I don't know, that's, that's another tempting factor for us to one day go back to the US. But one thing that's really holding me back there is just the health insurance system is, yeah, not something I wanna deal with right now. But anyway, this is a, a commute video, so let's stick away from talking about expensive, expensive things like houses and health insurance. And now we're gonna switch onto some of the busier roads over here. We're moving away from the river path. This is our last little section through here.
And we're gonna turn onto this main road. It's light, but that's okay. We're gonna, let's cross here. So this will be a new route for a lot of you guys who are dedicated watchers of our bike commute videos. So I don't always take the exact same route. Sometimes I, I have small little changes, but here we're back or we're, I guess this is the first time in this video we're on a, a main road like this. And this is a pretty busy area. We're getting pretty close to rush hour now. Not too far away, so I guess the roads will start getting busier, but normally they're just busy like that at the, the start of the intersection. So when the light turns green, all the cars that we're waiting will go. And after that, it's not too bad. They'll just come in small waves. The nice thing about the river path is it's relatively flat, so there's no climbing, there's no real hard work involved. Out here on the outskirts of the city though, there's, and on the main roads, there's a lot more hills. So we're going to Nagakute. Kokoa migi, migi migi. We're gonna crop cut right here so let's sneak over here stay away from the cars and this way we can cross right here And first we're gonna pass through a city here called Fujigaoka, or I guess it's not a city, it's a station area, a little town area. This is technically still part of Nagoya city, but the edge of the border of Fujigaoka city turns into Nagakute city, which is where we live. There's a police bike. A lot of the police cars will have their, their lights flashing as they roll around, so they just sort of act as a deterrent I don't see them like actively hunting people for pulling them over like they do in the US. It's another thing I really like over here is no one's really afraid of the police. Like you see the police, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm like, I'm not like, oh, did I do something wrong? I'm just sort of like, oh, it's the police. I've never been pulled over here actually. So Denny's over here, this is new. But Denny's here in Japan is nothing like Denny's in the US. Menu is completely different, and I actually really miss Denny's in the US. Continuing up the hill. The other cool thing about this area is there's still a lot of trees. So even though we're right in all these buildings, all these busy roads, we've got the streets lined with trees, which is really nice. Looks nice, feels nice, gives more shade, and I'm sure helps bring the air quality even better over here. Here we are, we're starting to get through the, the main city area. There's a subway stop here, one of the main, the last stops of the main subway line in Nagoya area. So 
it is a pretty busy area. I don't think I've really done any daytime ride videos here, but we have done some of the night ride videos here. The Sakura cherry blossoms are really beautiful in this area, so we've done some videos with that too. And we're gonna cut over here. We'll go through the main station area to show you guys. So this is the, the car drop-off pickup area. There's some cool restaurants here. We got a takoyaki, taco ball kind of shop. And this is the, the bus station. So when I get dropped off from the airport bus, they bring me here. And this is the main station over here. Got to be careful here though. Mr. Donut. Mickey D's. And we got a grocery store over here. Max value. There's a new tea stand here. I haven't tried that yet. I do want to try it. Oh, we got a green light. We're going to turn left here. And we're going to go straight here. This is a cool little bicycle parking area. Costs about 100 yen a day, a dollar a day. Park your bike. They've also got some outdoor parking as well for your regular bikes, motorbikes, and there's a bicycle section up here. And this section here is a really popular commute section. So lots of walkers, lots of cyclists, commuters, and also lots of that guy's bike is falling apart. And unfortunately, lots of cars will also try and speed through here as well. It's a really nice road. Really beautiful view of the, the train lines here. So at the end of the day, you can see some of the, the train cars coming and parking over here. Tung did a walking video over here for the, the morning walking commute. So you can check it out if you're interested. See what it's like here during the morning rush but it's a pretty cool section. Here's some tracks. There's no cars over here right now. Still too early. You can see them over there. I'll show you guys real quick for the video. You can see some of the trains, some of the cars over there, parked over there. At the end of the day, they'll come over here. Okay. Ato chotto. Tsukareta? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used to do this every day. And we gotta be careful here on this turn. Ah, Migi. Here we are, we entered Nagakte. So just like that, we've left Nagoya and are now in Nagakte. So we're right on the borderline, right at the edge of the city. And by bike from the station, it only takes like 10 minutes or so. But if we walk, it's, it's about 30 minutes. So one of the benefits of living kind of far from a subway station is the rent gets a lot cheaper. So if you're willing to ride your bike a little bit to get to the station, or you don't need to take the station or the train, like we never really take the train, you can save a lot of money. House 11. <laughs> they have really weird names for some of their apartments here too. They're really lacking some creativity. At least the color was pretty cool for that one.
and we are almost home. This light is always red, so we're gonna sneak over here, take the sidewalk route over. Otherwise, we're gonna be stuck here for five minutes. And we can cross back over here. And that's pretty much most of my commute. We're almost to our apartment. This is one of the last main roads we're on for just a little bit. And this section's pretty nice. This is the road that my wife used to commute on every day for her bike commute. You can check out her bike commute video if you haven't seen it yet. There's a nice cycling road this whole way, but it is right next to a busy road. Anyway, we're just about home, so we're going to finish this video here. Let's see what Tuan thought about this ride. Oh. <laughs> うん、楽しいでしょ。どっちのコースが好き、君の通勤、俺の通勤。あなたの通勤の方が。うん、楽しいでしょ。楽しい。うん。うん。うん。オッケー。All right, that's going to finish this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more cycling videos here in Japan, and we'll see you in the next video. Later guys. Jani. Jani, bye bye.